Hello everyone and welcome back to Farming Simulator 2022. We're back here on Elm Creek with Grower Games. The last episode we mainly did a bunch of contracts, which I'm going to avoid this episode. Granted, I don't think we'll have a whole lot going on this episode. Um, a few things to know. Um, the cotton mails that we had from last fall finally got all sold. So we were like at 143,000. As you can see, we're down to like 64 and a half right now. And the reason for that is because it's harvest time. And we finally invested in our own combine. So we're going to run down to the shop and pick that up here. And bring it back and get our wheat, wheat harvest. And we're going to finally have our own harvester for our, for our second second harvest, which is nice. Um, if you've seen the thumbnail, you already know what it is. But we'll drive down there, take a look at it, see what we're getting. Um, before we leave, we gotta feed the dog. Get him fed. Still has the name Midnight. I haven't decided what I'm gonna give it for a name. Hopefully he's close, but he'll come around here. I don't imagine he's too far off. Well, he'll come. He'll come eat when he's hungry. But, yeah, we'll get, we got him fed, so we'll hop into the Dodge here. We'll head down and pick up a, pick up the combine that we purchased. But yeah, we got quite a bit done on that sprayer. We invested into I think we're would be probably a third paid off already with all the contracts we did this past summer for spraying, which is pretty darn good. So let's head on down the road here. So Chuck says the combine's sitting a lot, the keys are in it, all we gotta do is just pull in and we're good to take off. He says business at, business has bo been booming since he got out of farming, he's been able to focus more on sales. So he's kinda glad he let the ground go to us when he did, oh jeez. Crazy drivers all around in here it seems like. But yeah, so, there it is. We d I decided to keep investing in the class, keep the same brand. Um, the new Holland's got a little, little bit of bigger hopper, but the header's a little smaller for it. So I didn't really want to go with a too much smaller head. I thought the head this class has was about right size for us right now, and it's kind of an updated model because the I don't know if you remember the last one we had. The chat it was all complete green, and now. The chassis kind of got the signature dark gray for the class series equipment. So we'll hop in here. The ladder folded up. We got a little short drive ahead of us to get it back to our place. Not the fastest thing in the world, but most combines aren't. Um, I decided to not bother invest into a header trailer. I figure most of our grounds around us, if we do custom work, and if it is really far, we might be able to drop it on the flatbed trailer if we really have to. Granted, the nice thing about having a header trailer would be would be um that it would we'd be able to hook it up behind this combine instead of having to have another vehicle and such. But eh, like I said, I don't see us doing too much custom combining, but we'll see. We might be able to get a few neighbors around us, which won't be that bad but it's kind of exciting right now we got our own combine um the farm dog seems found his toy in the room here but we're gonna I think we're gonna let the we're gonna have the straw spreader activated cuz last time the first harvest we didn't save any of it and I don't see us see it's worth saving saving anything again because we don't have a baler yet and we don't have anything else that's worth saving straw for and it's just with this economy it's just not really worth it so we'll this going here we'll get their headland taken out Make 
one more pass. We can drive on the grass a little, but I think one more pass of a headland will make it a little nicer for turning down here. And I don't know what we're going to plant here. I think I'm thinking of getting a good sized chicken house. Selling eggs is what I think kind of settling for livestock right now. Give us something else to sell and get a good sized chicken house going. And I think with that, we're going to invest into, I think our next crop here might be barley. It's kind of a cheap, it's got, kind of told it's a cheaper crop. It doesn't br bring as much for pricing, but it'd be a good crop to feed our chickens if we get some now. But, yeah, sitting in the combine kind of brings back some memories. Um, I remember growing up that the first combine I rode in was a Gleaner, and I think I think it was an F4. I would have to look up, I think. Yep, getting a little... Not watching my rolls here, so... But it was an F4, and it was... It was quite the combine to be riding in. There was no buddy seats in those combines back in the day. The buddy seat was either a little like a two gallon pail upside down or the toolbox that I sat in there. Um, the combine didn't have any it had heat but it didn't have any AC so it was this door was open and then this window was open to get airflow through there and it was just always a dirty, super dirty, dusty, dusty experience, and I remember riding in it quite a bit when we were doing oats, and if you never had oats dust on you, it's, it's a very irritant dust, it makes you itchy, it, it just sucks in general, and with as much dust that was, you can kind of see here, there's a good amount of dust coming, but that doesn't compare to what can, what you act, what actually comes in real life, it, it was pretty net, pretty bad. But right now we're we're already yielding pretty good. Good, I feel like I think we did a pretty good job here. For our for our fertilizer and our getting our weed killer down, I think if we didn't get our weed killer down, it would have been quite a bit of a different harvest. But I remember one of the things when riding it. It was just kind of a bobbing experience, you know. You kind of you can kind of tell by the way the camera bounced. It kind of rocks and such. It was a very kind of like hypnotizing experience. Just always like watching the head work and then this bobbing all along. It's enough to put a small child child to sleep. But I know that gleaner we had, we ran it for years. It was my grandparents' combine. Because my folks and my grandparents farmed together when they were first starting out, and we ran that combine until it, the engine blew up. And at that point, we already had a replacement combine. The only time we ever used that, the gleaner at that point, was for oats for, with the pickup attachment on it. And the next combine we had was a 94, 9410? Yeah, 9410. So it was. It was quite the upgrade for a combine when you sit there and think about it for us. But it was, it was a good, the Gleaner was a good old combine. We in, when it, the engine finally gave out, we ended up selling it to a local dealer who had a, basically a graveyard combine, so to speak. It, so it, basically the, I remember... So I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it. So basically, the graveyard was that they just had like a whole bunch of gleaners like within this, within the age frame, like all d different F series and such. And basically, when people needed parts for their gleaners, they could go out there and look through them and find if their the part was on there. And basically, they would pull the part off and take it up to the dealer, and the dealer would sell it to them because at the time there was no more parts for combines that old getting made being made anymore and I don't think and I don't know for sure I don't think aftermarket parts were a big thing for those like like now because I used to work at a dealership so 
and we could actually get quite a few parts through aftermarket vendors, but even then it was kind of a hit and miss type thing. I know there, some of the aftermarket parts we sold, some of the customers weren't really happy with the quality, and some were extremely happy. It was kind of like a hit and miss thing, you know? Always mixed opinion, mixed reviews. It's one of those hard things to kind of place to say what what was what was good and what was not good. And I should have been looking now. I probably should have been paying a little closer attention because I think hopefully hopefully we will be able to make it back to the other end with without getting a full full hopper and not have to stop in the middle of the field. But I think right now I think we might hang on to this wheat too. We make enough money. I might. I've been debating about if we do decide to get a chicken shed, if we invest into one right away, or if we pick up some more ground. And if we do invest in one, I think where I'm going to go with the shed is right over there where we got that little field at. I think we're going to kind of do away with that. I think we might put up a little chicken shed over there, put it like closer to the greenhouse, and maybe we'll pick up another another greenhouse. And that way we can effect, effectively double our, product, our produce production and have something to sell in the winter too. I mean, we didn't make too much off it. I think we only made like four grand. Oh, shoot. And... Nope, we couldn't quite make it. I think we're just gonna, instead of getting the tra tractor out and everything, we'll just drop it off over there. Call it good enough. Just drop it directly in. But no, I'm, I'm thinking once after this harvest, we'll probably put up the chicken shed, and I don't know. Since the, I remember. A chicken shed doesn't have to be, isn't it as prone to other livestock for run, manure runoff? So I might, I haven't decided, I might just put one right here, and if we decide to get a second one, just put it right next to it. Because I think eventually when we, when we do need more bin space, we might just tear these down and move it up closer to the road because I, my ideal situation is when we get enough ground, I think we're going to take all this stuff out and put up our put our yard mainly up all around here. I kind of want to keep the barn. I think we're going to... kind of bothers me that tree ain't growing. I could have sworn the last episode was growing, but maybe I just never noticed. It might be just considered dead now because I decided to tr trim those few branches. If that's the case, that kind of sucks, but... We can, like I said, we can plant a new one if we really have to. Back up here. Oh, I wonder if we're going to be... I'm trying to guess, guesstimate about how many liters we're going to be at here. I'm guessing around 13 when it's all said and done. We already got 7,500 in the, the bin here. Just keep going, plugging away. I think this episode we're just gonna, we're just gonna take it easy. We're not gonna put any time lapse jumps in it. Um, but in the episode after this, we might just be continuing in the month of July. Just talk a little bit about, a little bit more about my past experience. Give a little bit of different pace for an episode, for one episode at least. But yeah, the wheat's yielding really good. I'm glad we went went this route. Um, I think the next time we get ready to lime, I'm, when we have to lime this field, I might do a little field extension. I might take this driveway out in the middle up here. I, I do use it quite a bit, but I don't know if it's really worth it. People walking out over there. I don't think it's really worth keeping. I think with the, for the few extra acres we can get, for the few extra, well not acres, but a little bit extra ground we can get, we can get a little more income, maximize our income a little bit better. And we might 
till up a little strip over here too at the along the neighbors like let's get a little bit more out of this ground but nothing set in stone yet I honestly think we're gonna invest in the chickens otherwise the next best option I think what was thinking is sheep because sheep are kind of relatively easy to t take care of in this game I don't know real lot I don't know real life never owned any sheep or worked with sheep myself but I think that's the route we're gonna go but if we get sheep we'll have to invest into some hay and equipment and that won't be the biggest deal in the world it'll be kinda like thinking to back to the Jeremy Clarkson thing <laughs> if you ever ne never seen Jeremy Clarkson farm it's kinda it's kind of it. It's very entertaining for someone with my background. It was very entertaining for someone like my background to watch. It, it was definitely it definitely catched like some of the, the bad elements it comes to farming and the stresses and such. But it his home. I just thinking of the whole his sheep investment episode and that. And I'm just sitting here thinking, well, it's gonna end up cost costing probably. I feel like almost. I want to say the smallest smallest hay buying it would be I think it's around 25 to 30 grand for a new one that's like actual not a front mower just a hay buying which is kind of something I would want to get a disc the disc buying something more relatable to myself than the front mowers just cuz it's front mowers aren't super popular around here And then having to buy to buy a rake and that stuff it adds up a lot faster than you realize. And then I have to invest in the sheep pen. That's I I think it's gonna be pushing over a hundred grand just to get the sheep pen. Definitely over a hundred grand to get the sheep pen and everything. Everything done. Everything done and over with. So not done and over with, but everything invested to put up a sheep pen so I know chickens are gonna be expensive too but I don't think they're gonna be as expensive as a start start up as sheep would be just because I would need extra equipment I know cattle would be super expensive so they might be something we do later down the road but it looks like it was wrong I think we're gonna be about 11,000 liters when we get unloaded here Yep, just just a little over ten. So even then, I was still wrong. But I'm gonna have to talk to Chuck here. This thing has lost a lot of paint chipping. Let's see, see what the deal is, cause it peeled a lot already. And I we haven't even hardly got fifteen minutes on this thing. Yeah, we haven't even got three tenths of an hour on here. Might have to have a little chat with Chuck. To see if he sold us a lemon or not especially since we bought a brand new one not a used one but I'm just gonna back this in here for now but I think this is where we're gonna wrap this episode up just kind of a laid-back episode kind of talking about everything in general and maybe we'll do a few more of these if we get enough suggestions if people say they kind of want to hear other stories or experience my life but I think that's the, what we're going to leave that combine for now since we got the drill back here. We might have to find a new home for that. Might move it back over here, but I think this is where we're going to leave this episode up since we're not going to do a time lapse or anything. Um, If you enjoyed the, con the episode and the content of it, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out. If you're enjoying everything I've been producing so far, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh little patch out there I'll go grab that afterwards but I would like to thank you all for watching this episode and I hope you all have a wonderful day